Welcome to experiment number 3. The title of the experiment is Time and Frequency Response of RC and RL Circuits. The main aim of the experiment is to study the time response of RC and RL circuits. In order to get the time response, we are giving clear wave signals as input to these circuits. The output will be measured in the DSO. We can measure the frequencies in this DSO. We can compare this even the results with the theory. Coming to the circuit that we are doing interconnect here, the first circuit is RC circuit. Among these RC circuits, there will be again two circuits called RC integrated circuit and RC differentiated circuit. The circuits interconnections are done according to the... First we are going to discuss about the RC integrated circuit. The interconnection is done according to the manual that is given. You can see the diagram there. And the input voltage that is given here is 5 volts peak to peak. Now I am going to on the DSO so that you can observe the square wave that is given as input. See, as we can observe the square wave given at even for function generator, you can observe across channel 1. And another thing is we have to keep 10 volts peak to peak. And we can measure the 10 volts peak to peak from the measure, bu measure button across DSP. See whether across channel 1 it is 10 point, approximately 10 volts. So by 10 volts, and another important thing you have to keep, you have to keep in mind is you have to keep in DC mode. You have to keep both channel 1 and channel 2 in DC mode. By keep. By pressing channel 1 button and using the coupling button, you can see whether it is within in DC mode or not. Yes, it is in DC mode now. Similarly for channel 2, see whether it is in DC mode or not. Yeah, it is in DC mode. Okay, after completing this thing, we have to observe the time responses, time response of this particular circuit. For observing the time response, we have mainly three different cases. The first case is whenever the time period of this square wave is far far less than the time constant of the circuit. And the time period, time period of the square wave is almost equal to the time, time constant and the time period of the square wave is far far greater than the time constant. Time constant. Time so coming to the first case, whenever the time period is very very less than the time constant. So we will take the frequency across that particular case is 25 kHz. So by keeping 25 kHz as we observe in function generator. So by making, after keeping 25 kHz on the channel 2 in DSO. So you can observe the output across channel 2 where the input given at 25 kilohertz it is a triangular waveform as the name of the circuit tells about the RC integrated circuit the output will be an integration of the input so as input is a square wave the output must be a triangular wave so we can observe and sketch this V and V0 and you can observe the features of how V0 is varying across along with the input so coming to the second case whenever the time constant is almost equal to the time period of the circuit so we will keep uh, we will take frequency this, uh, in this case as 5 kilohertz so we can change this for keep 5 kilohertz at in function generator so we can change the see the variations in case of how these are varying so by making some adjustments and we will see how these variations are there. so in this case so the, it is not exact angle, it is getting somewhat near to the end. So at this particular point we can find even the time constant of the circuit from the CR by, by taking any two points on the rising and falling parts of V0 and measuring the voltage and timing intervals. We can measure the time constant. We can compare this time constant with the theoretical time constant that will be measured from the RNC by the, by the given circuit. So coming to the third, third step of this uh, time response that is whenever the time period is very very higher than the time constant. So for this we will take the frequency as 500 h. This can be sent through function generator. H. See so now making some adjustments here. Yeah. Now you can observe the output waveform across channel 2. Now we can sketch V and V0. So in this case means why you are getting in three different cases like this. See in this case the time constant of the circuit is very very less. Coming to the 25 kilo H case.
So in 25 kNH case, we are getting a triangular waveform. Because why you are getting this type of waveform means the time constant is very very more. So it is not getting, but uh, because the time period is very less, we are not getting sufficient time, uh, discharging time or rising time or falling time for capacitor. So it is not going up to complete 5 volts of the capacitor. So now coming to the finite edge case. So in this case, so in this case we will observe that the output is almost equal to input because it is the rise time and fall time are very less here and it is getting near to the input. You can see that. So here the rise time and the fall time are very less. The main point you should observe here is the integrator action is performing in the first case. Okay. And we have to observe all the V and V nodes here and sketch these waveforms. Next. So you can get the exact waveform by making some adjustments. Yeah, so now you can observe that rise time and fall time is almost very less. It is somewhat nearer, it is almost nearer to the input voltage. So now by, by doing this, the RC integrated circuit part is completed. So coming to the next part, RC differentiated circuit. The main, the, the only variation in this RC differentiated circuit is entertaining resistor and capacitor, we will get RC differentiated circuit. Now you can make the variation, just interchange resistor and capacitor things. So circuit connections has been done for RC differential circuit according to the circuit that is given in the manual. So we can observe the square wave input 5 volts and 10 volts peak to peak. And in this also for finding step response or time response we have three different cases. In RC differential circuit also there will be three different cases. So one as said in the previous case. So starting from the first case whenever the time period of the square wave form is far far less than time constant that is uh, frequency 25 kilohertz so keeping 25 kilohertz from the function generator and making the channel to on you can observe the output so at 25 kilohertz the, we can see the out output how it is varying so like that we can observe the same step, step response by making the frequency at 5 kilohertz the second case this the time period is almost equal to time constant. You can see there will be variation from the input across the resistor. So you can observe this waveform. So coming to the third case, that is nothing but at 500 h. Making some adjustments here. You can see how the output is there. It's, all, it's almost looking like impulse. So uh, as the name implies, it's RC differentiated circuit. Means as input is uh, step input, the output should be impulse. So we are getting this this at the frequency at 500 h. So why you are getting like this? Means as in this particular case, the time period of this square waveform is very very greater than time constant. So the whole voltage across the input will be across the capacitor. So we are finding the voltage across the resistor. So it will be almost zero. So we are observing this waveform in that particular case. Coming to the fourth step of this part, keep the input frequency at 40 kilo h. And function generator. Making some adjustments in times per division. So we can observe in a linear tilt seen across V0. So it is not exactly near output V0. So there will be at least some linear tilt. So by increasing the frequency from here, from the function generator, from the 
from the content generator. Some particular, by increasing slope, uh, like for, for the, we can see at particular frequency that the tilt will be negligible. It will be almost look like input. You can observe the variations across the function uh, DSO by varying the frequency. So we can find the minimum frequency at which the tilt is almost negligible. It will look like almost linear. So by doing this part, we can uh, we complete this RC differentiated circuit part. So coming to the next part of this experiment. So coming to the next part, that is RL, RL circuit. So RL circuits in this also we have two different circuits, RL differentiated circuit and RL integrator circuit. So the steps that should be followed are same as the previous steps that we followed in RC circuits that you, that, that part we are skipping that you can do that part easily. Coming to the third part of the experiment, that is frequency response of RC and RL circuits. In this, first we are going to see the circuit of RC different integrated circuit. This circuit is also called as RC low pass filter because it, it passes low, pass, low, pass, low frequencies and detonates high frequencies. So the interaction is done as shown previously. Now the main variation compared to previous one is we have to keep the input signal waveform shape as sun. Previous one it is pulse shape, now uh, previous it is pulse shape, now it will keep in sine wave by using changing the wave button. So you can observe the sine wave across the DSO. Now the main thing is you have to keep the keep to be voltage as 2 volts. So by using the amplitude button and the function generator you can make the peak to peak voltage as 2. So, PVP 2 volts can be observed in DSO. Another important thing that you should remember is you should keep the DC offset as 0. So, by using coupling, we should keep in AC mode and across channel 2 also we should keep in AC mode so they are already both in AC mode so no need of any variation so after keeping this we have to observe the output waveform so on the channel 2 so you can observe the output waveform and now the main important part is so we should observe the V A and V naught means output uh, input uh, frequency input waveform and output waveform at different frequencies starting from 200 h so starting from 200 h we are making some adjustments in time per division voltage per division can observe the V A and V. So like this by starting from 200 H vary the frequency like up to 500 H, 1 kilo H, 2 kilo H, up to 200 kilo H and at each particular place you observe both V0 and V A and note down in a table form. In the particular range of 1 kilo H to 2 kilo H take readings for every 100 H like from 1000 H, 1100 H to up to 2000 H. Okay. Make down in a table form. Now coming to the Next step, for each of the above frequency settings, you should also display V0 versus VA. This can be done using XY mode. So first you should need to ground the two inputs. This can be done by going to the XY mode. First go to the XY mode. Go to the menu button and press XY. Keep the, both the channels in ground mode. So that you can set the exact like the center. 
So we can see the dot in the DSP. As you can observe, there is a dot here. So this dot should be exactly at the center. So now the dot is exactly at center. Now make these waveforms back into AC mode. And channel 2 also. And now display in XY mode. So now, after keeping the dot at the center, now you will observe a wave, observe the diagram as shown given in the manual, as you can see in the DS4 the diagram. So by in this diagram, by varying at different frequencies, we can find the phase across V0 and V. We can measure the V, Y and A in the uh, as said in how should we measure means it is given in the manual measure according to that we can measure Y and A. Using these subregions, we can find the measure y and a. With that, you can find the phase angle theta. So at different frequencies, we find we will find the different phase phase angles between v and v, v and v naught. So we will form a table of those at different frequencies, different phase angles across v and v naught. From those table of amplitudes and phase readings, obtained from the above steps, we should plot a graph. First, instead of uh, before drawing the graph, we should find the logarithmic gain. From the table that we have got before of V0 and VA. The logarithmic gain formula is given here, AP is equal to 20 log V0 by VA. So at different frequency we should at different frequencies we should find the AB at different points. So we have to draw all these tables on a graph sheet called semi-lag graph paper. You can see this graph paper now. So in this the x-axis is it will be a log scale, it will be in, ten, in, in powers of tens. In our case, the x-axis is taken as frequency and y-axis is either voltage gain or phase. So if we start from, as you can observe all these frequencies. Suppose if we start from, the x-axis has 1H one, one and it will vary, this will be 10H and this will be 100H and this will be 1 kilo and 10 kilo if we start the starting axis as 10 h it will be in 100 h so it will be in the powers of 10 it will vary it will vary so it will be 100 h 1 kilo h and 10 kilo h and 100 kilo h so according to our requirement we can start at a required point and we will get up to the maximum frequency we can get suppose so this is a db axis starting from 0 dB, 1 dB. Suppose if we want to plot a value, a voltage gain value across 2 kHz in our axis, so that we can, starting at this, so this is 1 kHz, this will be, next will be the 2 kHz, we can plot, suppose it is 1 dB, for example, take it as 1 dB, so we can plot the point here. So like this, we can plot at different frequencies, uh, on the y-axis there will be voltage, voltage gain so we can plot easily and draw the graph easily. So similarly we can proceed this thing for even the phase thing, phase components. Now the y axis will be phase phase components and x axis will be again frequency so we can draw the different graph again. Now this part of RC components RC part is completed. Now coming to the RL circuit now coming to the RL differentiated circuit we should repeat all the steps above steps and again we should draw the, all the tables and we should plot the graphs again on a different semi-lab graph sheet according to the frequency. The frequency variations are given in the manual. Those are from starting from 2 kHz to 500 kHz. So by doing this, the experiment will now be completed. Thank you.